Okay, time for some real world testing. I did some flying with the guys earlier today, but uh, sun sets out, so I'll see if I can get something better. Here's the BTX. Drone. Sorry, that's a BRX. Drone. Glasses. That's what I'll be seeing. Let's see how this goes. Okay, got glasses. You can see pretty clear. So today I'm going to be showing you my transparent FPV goggle project. Uh, some of you know that I've been working on it for a little while now. It's based off of the X-Real Air AR goggles or glasses, I guess you could call them, um, what I'm wearing right now. So basically the idea with this is to enable us to fly FPV while still seeing line of sight, not only the drone, but the stuff around us. Um, I figure that um, not only for the legal reasons, which people can debate whether or not it's actually more legal or not to do this than just wear your classic FPV goggles, but also um, for the safety side of things, you can see what's going on around you means you won't be jumped. Uh, you won't be approached by somebody that you're not expecting. Uh, those kinds of things. Um, not looking at it from a legal perspective, but you can spot things for yourself um, where you might feel more comfortable with somebody calling out dog walker across the park. With this, you can actually see the dog walker. Now they aren't perfect. It is actually really hard to fly while seeing stuff behind the screen, as I found out today, but it is doable and you can still cover them up and you get a pretty decent screen. Um, if you cover them up or even just as they are, especially in low light or it's like sunset situations. So I started off by doing, trying to build an analog module for this, um, ran into some problems, but I was too excited to actually fly through these glasses that I ended up going and buying a Walksnail VRX because Walksnail is the only company in FPV that actually has an active VRX. I shouldn't say that HD zero might, but it doesn't matter because Walksnail is H, like true HD. Um, so yeah, so I bought a Walksnail VRX and the appropriate converters because these goggles only take type C. And I managed to make it so that everything's powered off of a LiPo battery because the converter actually does need um, power separate, which is a pain in the butt. This would be so much simpler if it didn't. Um, it's still an early prototype, I think, down the road, I want to, well, not even down the road. I'm, I'm probably not gonna stop working on this right away. It's too exciting. But uh, I'm gonna shrink the module box that I've made and uh, probably take apart the VRX to solder directly to it and build an internal battery. So when you're out flying, all you have is one module box that will be about half the size of what I got now and the glasses. The other thing that I was thinking about today with the winter coming in is because you have a module box with the transmitter and receive, or sorry, the receiver um, separate from the glasses that you're viewing and the cord length for this thing is like five feet, six feet, you could actually stick this out through your car window and fly from inside the car, which is what most of us do anyway, but with limited range, right? So yeah. Anyway, in this video, now that I've rambled on for long enough, 
Uh, I'm going to break this thing apart and show you guys kind of what I did. It's remarkably simple. It took me a while to get to the point to figure it out. But uh, the design itself is simple it, and it is far from perfect. But uh, I'm not done with this yet. I will show you guys um, how to do it for now. But I will make some improvements and come back to this, make it more efficient. So you will need a wax nail system. I built this little... Whereas drone sub 250 with the Walksnail VRX or VTX for this, that's not that important. If you have a Walksnail system at all, this will work. So I'm going to get down into uh, into breaking this down and uh, show you what's inside and how simple this really is to set up. If you have some basic soldering skills, you're going to be fine. Um, and an Amazon account. <laughs> really help if you had an Amazon Prime account for this. So I'll definitely link a parts list down in the description. Keep in mind, this is not a cheap project. Um, I've spent at least a thousand dollars trying to figure everything out. For you guys, it will be a bit less because you'll know what to buy. Um, you'll probably be under a thousand dollars Canadian, but only barely. All right. So for this, I am using some M3 screws. I will also have the um, link available for the prints that I've designed for this. So you can print off a box instead of zip tying everything together. Um, the whole reason I made a box. And it would help if I could get the right screw size. Hopefully I'll... Uh, remember to actually make chapters for this too, considering I am taking forever. Okay, so I've made this box in three pieces, a top plate, a middle, and a bottom. The middle holds most of the junk. The bottom is only there to hold the Type-C adapter, but I'm hoping to eliminate that entirely um, in the near future. It will involve me tearing apart the adapter and it's made of stainless steel. So that is a big pain in the butt. Okay, so it's a really simple box design. Three screws on the top, takes off the front plate. And you can see in here, see if I can focus on that a little bit better. Okay, so when you open up the top plate, basically what you have is the Waxnail VRX. The antennas are actually partly holding it in place through the top. It's not, it's pretty stiff, all things considered. There is a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI adapter that has been decased. Um, fancy way of me saying I spent about 30 minutes cutting plastic off of it to make it smaller. And then you have the end of the adapter, which the only reason it's sticking out the end is because I bought a 90 or sorry, a 180 degree uh, mini to regular HDMI adapter to hopefully drop it down below the box now, but it actually went the wrong way. So working on a solution to that, it will be part of why I can make this smaller if I don't get annoyed enough and actually solder directly to the box now. So I'm just gonna take this adapter off here and take these antennas off. And the barrel connector. Hopefully I can explain what's going on a little bit better. Okay, now that I've got all that out, I'm going to take the bottom plate out. This is ending up being more of a how to disassemble instead of a how to build video. But uh, yeah, reverse engineering, whatever. It's really simple. Once you see what's going on, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, yeah. Didn't need to make a whole video about that. But it's cool. And not that many people have done it yet, if any. I'm sure somebody's done this out there, they just didn't bother to make a whole video about it.
Oh, I, there goes a screw. I think I have 500 of them. Okay. So this is going to be kind of hard for me to take apart the way that I've put it together, but I'll kind of show you. On the bottom, it's extremely simple. Let's see if we can lighten this up. So it's extremely simple. You have the output, which is a type C uh, running to the HDMI input. And I've just made a little bit of a casing to hold it in place. These are remarkably hard to find. You have to make sure that you're ordering one that is HDMI out to types, or sorry, HDMI in to type C out. It has to be that. It only works one way uh, with this type of converter. It does not work the other way. If you have a type C to HDMI, which a lot of people have because cell phones and whatnot, that won't work. It has to be output on the type C side. Um, if you read the Amazon descriptions, you're looking for one that's different than the one I'm gonna list. Um, this is, uh, just make sure it's saying that type C is the output. So the next thing you're gonna see is this red and black wire down here. That is actually a micro USB um, plug and you could make one of these by just cutting apart any old uh, USB cable, just one that you're not using anymore or whatever. Just cut it apart so you can get uh, the data cables off of it. You don't need them. And so you can solder to the voltage regulator, which I will show you next. So this thing in black tape, the camera will show it is a voltage regulator. Oh, there goes my black wire. Look at that. I'm gonna have to rebuild this already. Um, so this is a voltage regulator. It's set to five volts, but these ones are variable rates. Uh, it makes them flexible for all sorts of different projects that I work on. Um, yeah, and that runs itself through a little hole in my case to a barrel connector splitter. This actually came with the Waxnail VRX. Presumably one barrel would go into your goggles, the other one would go to the VRX to make your analogs HD, which is kind of what we're doing here, except the goggles are already HD. It's just the wrong kind of HD. So this barrel is actually where your um, regular goggle cable would plug in from your like XT60 LiPo battery. And the other end of the barrel just plugs into the VRX as intended. I'm just kind of, taking advantage of the fact I have this splitter so I can split it off and make a five volt connection there. Uh, to get a better look, this is the regulator you will be looking at. It is pretty simple. It's labeled in, in, out, out. So there's two ports on it. I shrink wrapped it so it's not gonna short on anything. The only really frustrating part is, and I'll see if I can zoom in here. This thing has a potentiometer. Let's see if I can zoom in some more. Right there. So this potentiometer is really sensitive and you absolutely must have a, um, what do you call them? Voltmeter, um, you know, uh, is, that, is that what they're called? Voltmeters? I think that's what they're called. Voltmeter, multimeter. You need a multimeter. Pardon me. So you need a multimeter basically to um, establish what voltage output this is at before connecting it to anything or you will fry stuff. Um, I would plug it in on one side to just to a straight uh, LiPo, use like any regular uh, XT60. With, you don't need a cap, but I have a bunch with caps on. So that's what you're gonna wanna use. Plug a battery into it and start use with a tiny Phillips, a double zero head Phillips. You wanna turn that thing um, clockwise, I think. One, I think it's, is it? No, it's counterclockwise. You're gonna to wanna to turn it counterclockwise to turn it down. Um, don't touch this thing with a multimeter while it's running just for safety's sake. It's too easy to short something out. So turn it down, plug a battery in, test it, keep turning it down until you get to about five volts. Keep it under 5.1 volts, but over 4.99 volts. It has to be over five. Um, but yeah, that is seriously the most complicated part of this whole thing is that freaking calibrating that thing. That's how that works. You don't necessarily need that volt, um, that buck converter. You could use something like this, which is a buck slash boost converter. 
I didn't use one because it's massive and it doesn't require it. Like this project is pretty simple. Um, yeah, kind of over explaining stuff, but that's how that all works. And uh, you need a mini to regular HDMI converter. As you can see, like me trying to explain it, it's, it, it's not that complicated. The only other thing you need is the um, AR goggles. I'm sure there's glasses. I keep calling them goggles, but they're glasses. I'm sure there's um, other glasses out there that work similarly, but these ones are some of the best on the market, so it'll work great for this. Now, I did fly with these today. It was absolutely fantastic. It's only, I think, a 50 degree field of view, so it's pretty narrow as far as we're used to, but the clarity is perfect. Like I can use a 4K uh, Windows monitor through these things and see all the text and read all the text. You can game in them. I believe they have either a 60 or 120 Hertz refresh rate, but because you can only use the Walksnail VRX in 1080, um, 60 Hertz is fine for these, even if that is what they are. Uh, Brightness is pretty good. They work great for this application. Absolutely fantastic. But that basically sums up uh, the whole project right now. It's a lot more simple than it seems at first glance. Pretty much anybody who's been in this hobby for more than a couple months could probably figure this out. Um, so yeah, just a quick recap of what you need for this project. You know, Walksnail VRX, a mini to micro HDMI converter preferably some 3D prints that you can throw everything into. You want the barrel connector splitter that came with the v, uh, the VRX. Um, you need a walk snail drone, voltage converter, and an HDMI to type C converter. Oh yeah, and an old uh, micro USB cable to tear apart. I will probably list everything that I've just talked about in the description below. I don't make any money from Amazon, so source it from wherever. I'm just listing it as examples. Uh, yeah, I'll show you some clips of stuff I've done today, and hopefully this helps you out.